willing to do it. It's expensive. It's 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 uh, costly. It's uh, hard work, and it's a liability. But the Lord said, the Lord said for a church to go in the highways and hedges and come teach every person the gospel, not on a computer, face to face. And uh, our church work, bus workers and work, went out yesterday and talked to, let's see what I've got it wrote down here, 1,152 people face to face. That's a blessing, y'all. That's a blessing. There ain't one church in 10,000 does that. Now, I'm not bragging. I mean, we got our faults, but thank God for the good things we got. Ain't that right? And knocked on 1,085 doors yesterday. People from Shining Light Baptist Church. So that's good. That's obeying the Great Commission. Now, if you go to a church that don't believe in carrying out the Great Commission, you know, let the neighbors go to hell and send missionaries to China, something ain't right. Something's wrong. So let's... Uh, uh, we're going to enjoy the bus kids this morning. We got a festival planned out for them here after the services. Do not leave after church. Make sure my mic's on here back there, y'all. And uh, tell me, Roy, somebody. Already? Uh, one of you nice fellows back there that know me, run back there and see if they're ready. And uh, uh, are you ready, Miss Vicky? All right. Uh, this is our bus ministry, and you're going to see them this morning. And uh, they, uh, I don't even know how many we had this morning. There's a bunch. Go ahead, Miss Desi. Amen. Amen. All right, come on. These are Christian soldiers that, that's going to grow up, hopefully, to serve the Lord one day. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Every little boy, every little girl, Jesus died for them and died on the cross for their sins. He died on the cross for them just like he did the Queen of England or Abraham Lincoln or George Washington or me or you or your family. Come on, let's go. Let's go, boys. You're gonna get a hot dog. Let's go. Come on. Amen. Amen. All right. Here they come. Amen. Hallelujah. Mark on here, y'all. Amen. Amen. Let's go. Walk, 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 walk fast. Walk fast. Walk fast. Let's go. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Look, these two little ones right here. Ain't them cool? Get these two boys right here. right here, y'all. Would you think they're akin to each other? I'd guess yes. Wouldn't you? Amen. 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 Yep. Amen. Come on, let's go. Up 
here, Charles. <laughs> yeah, come on. Amen. Amen. Come here, boys. I want these two boys to come out here, man, man. These are, these are our featured, our featured singers for today. I don't know what their names are, but I could give them one. I guarantee it. Uh, amen. Huzz and buzz. <laughs> How old are you guys? How old are you? You speak English? How old are you? How old are they, Blanca? Yeah, there are three. What a blessing. And then this girl right here, it is her birthday today, right? And you are taking care of her. That's what she told me. No, you're taking care of her. You're making. Her taking care of both of us. Her taking care of both of us. Who's going to take care of me? I'm not going to get a hot dog. Listen, we got more kids than we do hot dogs. So somebody don't want one, right? Who wants a hot dog? Raise your hand. Uh, well, I tell you what we'll do. We'll just cut them right down the middle and cook them a long time and they swell up. And you can make two out of one hot dog. That's right. Done that before. I have literally done that before. You cook them long enough, they swell up like an old, like old sail cat. Y'all know what sail cat is? It's a cat that's been run over so many times, you just go out there and get it and sail it off down the woods. That's, that's where them hot dogs are. They'll swell up. All right, everybody be quiet now. If you want a hot dog, you got to be quiet. Shh. We're going to have a good testimony in the junior church. Brother Kevin is here. And we're going to have fun after church. And we are going to have fun. But you got to remember... The main thing in this world is knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the main thing in this world. There's nothing like it. I told him a minute ago that our bus workers knocked on over 1,100 doors yesterday and, uh, and talked to literally 1,080-something people face-to-face. I mean, they, I mean, I ain't bragging, but there ain't one church in 500 does that. Thank, we got our faults, but thank God for what our church did yesterday. You ought, to, you, ought to just, you ought to just give our bus workers a big hand this morning. Amen. That's right. You know what the Lord said? He said, go to highways and hedges. He was in the spirit or drunk last night. I don't know which one. Okay. <laughs> uh, had them falling out of the choir. Hallelujah. All right, there's nothing to me. I've been in the bus ministry since 1982, and they're still running buses in Marion today, all in the churches everywhere, because of the bus ministry. There's just nothing like it. There's just nothing like it. So let's sing. Everybody know Jesus loves me? Let's sing that this morning, and we're going to let y'all go to your class, and they got something good for you. Help me now. Everybody, let's sing. Ready? Here we go. Everybody knows it real loud. Jesus loves me, this I can't hear you. Pull the Bible tell. Turn it up. Little one to him belong. They are weak, but he's strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, come on. Jesus loves me, the Bible I believe we can do better than that, don't y'all? We can do better than that. Come on. This girl right here was doing good. I couldn't hear you, boys. Come on now. Crank it up. See this boy right here? He knows about three languages, don't Two or three languages. Three languages. How does how, old redneck like me only know how to speak hick? And he knows three languages. That's awful, ain't it? All right, let's try it again. Try it again. Ready? Come on, girls. Sing. I want to hear y'all back there. Ready? G. Turn it up. Love me. This. I know. Hey. Oh. The Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak. But he is strong. 
that Jesus loves them. So I want you to say, Jesus loves you on the count of three. Ready? Tell all these nice people. Ready? One, two, three. Jesus loves you. Woo. Hallelujah. All right. They're going to go there. They got junior church playing. Then we got fall festival out back right at the church. And we are so excited about it. Go ahead. We're going to start down this way. Go to class. Miss Vicki, y'all go ahead. Amen. All right. Let's give him a big hand this morning. Isn't that a blessing, y'all? Woo. Woo. Hallelujah. Woo. Ain't never seen nothing like it, hey? Ain't that something? Lord, have mercy. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? And there's thousands like that. See, when you go to certain portions of our bus ministry, as our as we're knocking on doors over here, there's another, a car pulls in over here, and it's all jacked up like that got big wheels on it about that big around and you can hear that music about two blocks before they get there and somebody runs out and bends over the window somebody else runs out and bends over the window somebody else runs out and bends over the window and you know who that is that's the devil's bus workers and they're up for grabs whoever gets them first those kids the devil's got his soul winners out there working collecting souls for him and the Lord has his I challenge everybody here today, get involved in the bus ministry. Care about somebody. Care about somebody else. Jesus said, by this, by this, shall all men know you, my disciples. Not how smooth you talk, but if you have love, one for another. Amen? Um, Brother Kevin Gauthier is here this morning, and I've known Brother Kevin seven years, maybe seven, something like that, but he's just been saved the last couple of years, I guess, year and a half, and I want him to give a quick word of testimony and he's going to go back there and talk to the kids this morning. And I praise the Lord for what I've been hearing about him and uh, how God's worked in his life. And I want him to tell you what the Lord done for him right quick. And then he's going to be going right on back there to preach to them. And then we're going to have preaching in here. And then we're all going to go out here and have hot dogs and the rain's over. Um, uh, uh, we're going to have a great time this morning. So make yourself at home. Come on, brother. So he's giving me two minutes. So <laughs> that's rough. That's rough. So let me, let's condense, right? Um, thank you guys for having me today. Uh, I got saved about a year and a half ago, just like you said. We've known each other probably for about six and a half years and used to rent a house from him. And he used to come over and ask me to come to church. And I would kind of say, yeah, maybe, and turn the other way. And uh, mainly my whole life I've, I've been that way about church. I didn't really grow up in the church and never was very taken to church or anything like that. And so... Not until the past probably year and a half, uh, actually it's probably been almost two years, uh, I started going to church and, Amen. and I started, uh, I realized I needed, I needed Christ in my life. Amen. I had a friend of mine come up to me one day and ask me, he said, if you die today, are you going to heaven or hell? And I told him, I said, I hope I'm going to heaven. And it's not the answer that 
he was hoping he would hear. Yeah. But he made me realize that I thought I was going to heaven because I was a good person. And I, I was not. And I realized that I was not a good person. And I realized that if I died that day, I was going to hell. And so I actually went home, and I didn't open the Bible. I actually went to Google. You know, this is just truth. I went to Google, Amen. and I Googled, how do you get saved? Amen. And so <laughs> about 2 o'clock in the morning, I was going through Google, and I, I came across a verse, and it was James 2.19, I believed. Yeah. And it says that um, you believe that God is one, um, you do good, but even the devil believes, or, or even the That's demons right. believe and shudder. Right. It made me realize that I was no different than the devil. I was no different than the demons. Even though I was walking around thinking I was a good person, yeah. um, I was no different than what the devil is and no different than the demons were. And that mm -hmm. definitely convicted me. I went to church and I started learning everything I could know about Jesus. I started reading the red letters. You know, the red letters in the Bible is all about what Jesus, who he was and what he said and what he stood for and who he was as a person. Yeah. And I started to realize this Jesus is what I want. I want Jesus. Um, I remember in, it, it, back before I used to I used to pray I used to I used to ask God for things, but so does the devil. The devil knows that Jesus is Lord. That's right. Right. Yep. And yep. so, if I if I walk around and I, and I and I say, well, Jesus is is God, that doesn't save me. Yep. Right. When, when, one one right. time one one time uh, it was probably about a month before um, month around when I started going to church. Uh, they did an altar call. I was sitting about second row, and I just felt like the whole church, I felt like a force was just pushing me forward. And I was like, I was, I was, I was shifting my seat. I was going nuts. I was like, I, 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 do I really want to do this? Is this how it works? I, don't, I, I, I want Jesus. I want to get saved, but I, I, I don't know if I'm doing it the right way. I just don't know. I, um, and so I, I decided to move forward. But then I couldn't move forward because there were so many people to my right and my left, I couldn't get past them. So I stepped over the front row of seats, and I grabbed my youngest daughter, and I stuck her on the stage. Amen. I kneeled down in front of that stage, and when I kneeled down in front of that stage, I bawled like a baby. Amen. And Amen. I, Good. My heart cried out to God, and Hallelujah. I said, God, I, I can't do this anymore. Amen. I, I want to believe that you... Thank I want God. to believe. I want to believe that, that you died on the cross for my sins. That's I right. want. I want you. I, I, I'm tired of my life. I can't do this anymore. I'm tired and I'm and I'm, I'm hurting. I'm in pain, and Amen. I don't want to feel this way anymore. Amen. I believe and I want you to be the Lord of my life. Amen. It's what my heart said. It's what I what I what I said with my words, and not so many words, but it's what I wanted. And and at that moment, I felt complete peace. Amen. I can't. I cannot describe in words what it felt felt like. But when I stood up, I felt like everything was just going to be okay. Everything was wiped clean. And little did I know that at that, at that moment, I was, I was saved. I was saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so from that point on, he's changed Amen. my life. He's totally redirected everything. Amen. And uh, now I live for him wholly and completely. I've, I've sold my business that I started in his backyard. Thank God I was able to. Amen. And uh, I sold my business, and I live 100% for Jesus Christ. And, uh, six months ago, I, I felt a strong call to preach. Amen. And uh, and I'm, I plan to do uh, school at the beginning of the year. I'm actually preaching actually next uh, Sunday at Liberty Free Will Baptist. Um, so God's done amazing things in my life, and I'm Lord, extremely brother. grateful. So thank Isn't you. Isn't that something? Thank Let's you. give him a big hand. Right. Isn't that a blessing? That's good, man. Amen. Ah, oh, not a blessing. What a blessing. Amen. And they, they really lived in my mom's house for a few years. That's how I got to know him. And uh, isn't that a blessing? He's going back into the lines, Dan. Uh, so y'all pray for him that he'll come out alive uh, this morning. He's going into the lines, Dan. Amen. All right. All right. Let's uh, remind you that this is camp meeting week. And our camp meeting starts Wednesday night. I hope that you'll be here every single service. Now, Thursday... Friday and Saturday, we're having morning services just like this, 10 o'clock every morning, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday this week. And the ladies are fixing food. So we're having a noon meal. It's free. Come, we're having, I think we're having um, barbecue one day. We're having lasagna one day. And I, I don't know, chicken or, or ham or something. And uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's good meal. These ladies can cook. Look around here. Do you see anybody? It looks like they're starving to death. Uh, so uh, these ladies around here cook real good. And so uh, that'll be Thursday, Friday, and Saturday morning. 
And then Thursday night, Friday, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday, Brother Frankie Hunt, the old preacher from up the mountain, Bob McCurry, the Edwards family, the Nun sisters, these girls are still in high school and they will bless your heart. They'll be here Thursday night, the Edwards family Friday night and Saturday night. Uh, hallelujah, Howard, uh, Brother Gary and Ugg, Loretta Lynn from up in West Virginia uh, are coming and you just, you really don't wanna miss the count meeting. Decide right now, put the homework, let it go late. Kids will get home at a decent time. Be in the camp meeting every single night uh, starting Wednesday night. It's gonna be good, okay? All right, let's stand right quick and get our offering. And um, I've got mine right here. We appreciate you that give a special offering for the camp meeting. I hope others will. I did mine last week. We're asking every family that can to give $100 offering for the camp meeting. If you can't, you can't. If you can, we ask that you would and could. And uh, I've put mine in last week, and the Lord blessed me already for it. And I've got more here today. Uh, a friend of ours who watches on the Internet, with Joe from up in New, New Jersey, sent us a kind offering of $200. And uh, I'm putting that in this morning, and it, it just keeps coming from here and there. So it's an expensive week. Expensive week. You see what you saw in here a minute ago? It cost a lot of money. Uh, a lot of money. I think nearly $20,000 last year. So uh, uh, let's everybody give and do what we're supposed to. Can anybody deny that one of those kids is worth everything we could ever do? Yeah. Sure is. One of them. So when there's hundreds of them like there is here this morning, let's give and honor God. Would you do that? If you need to get caught up, good time to do that too. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for our church and thank you for dedicated bus workers, those that stayed out all day long yesterday. Lord, I pray that you'd bless them and I pray that you'd touch every kid, every adult that come on the buses this morning. Holy Spirit of God, move on their life. Touch every heart today. Bless this offering. Supply the need for the camp meeting. In Jesus' name, amen. Bibles open now. While you turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter number eight, um, I want to uh, tell everybody to have a seat now. Let's get our settling down here this morning. Um, uh, calm, real, real calm, still kids, all the kids that we have in here. The biggest part of them is back there in the junior church. We actually have two junior churches going this morning, one for little bitty bitty ones, another one for like 11 up. And so uh, everybody get your seat, please and we'll get in the Word of God. Uh, Proverbs chapter number eight, please. Take your Bible and look here in Proverbs chapter eight. And I wanna bring you a message beginning here with verse number five. Really glad to have all of you that are visiting here with us this morning. If this is the first time you've been here, make yourself at home, uh, enjoy yourself. Uh, good to have my friend, Brother Larry, and um, some of my own Brother Larry and Miss Michelle that are with us this morning. And you be sure and make them welcome. Raise your hand back there, Larry, so we can see you. Amen. He's a businessman down in South Carolina. Uh, uh, Proverbs chapter number eight, and look at verse five. Proverbs chapter eight, and look at verse five. Here's an unusual word here I want you to look at. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. The word I want you to look at is in the middle of verse five. And it is the word fools. The word fool is mentioned over 50 times in the Bible. The word fool means 
silly or to be the victim of a trick. You ever heard anybody say, well, he made a fool out of me? I mean, they tricked me. They duped. You've been duped. You've, you've been tricked. And the Lord uses that phrase many times. Some people get upset when a preacher uses that word fool because of the words of Jesus in Matthew 5, 22 about not calling your brother a fool and so forth and so on. But they don't take into consideration uh, Luke chapter 24 when the Lord called the di disciples fools, 1 Corinthians 15, 36, when Paul called the Corinthians fools, and over and over in Luke 12, 20, and Matthew 23, 17. So there's a right way and a wrong way. So when I use the word fool, I'm saying what who God calls a fool. It's not me, it's not my words. I'm preaching this morning on the subject, the three biggest fools in the world. Who would that be? Some of y'all mind done running. I know one, that's my brother-in-law. No, no, I'm not I'm talking about uh, overall the three <laughs> biggest fools in the world. Let's look at them, if you would, please, in your Bible. Quickly this morning, take your Bible, turn to Psalm 14, and look at verse one. I'll show you the first one. The first fool I want to talk about this morning, who is silly, who is the victim of a trick, who has been duped, who has been tricked, the first one here is in uh, Psalm 14 and verse 1. And it says something like this. It said, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Now just here. Uh, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So the first biggest fool in the entire world this morning, I call him the atheist. The atheistic fool. An atheist is somebody who says there is no such thing as God. Now, according to the Bible this morning, a person, I don't care if he's a professor, I don't care if he's a doctor in a, in a law school, I don't care if he's a professor at Harvard or Yale or Princeton. According to God, if a man says there is no God, that man is a fool. You say, well, that man's got uh, 20 years of education, Brother Danny. Well, you know what that means? He is an educated fool, and that's the worst kind. And so I want to talk about that in just a minute. Serve an atheist a good meal and tell him there is no cook. So, uh, take him to a ride in your new car and tell him there was no manufacturer. Show him your new house and tell him nobody built it. It just came together all by itself. Take him to the Empire State Building and tell him it sprang forth over thousands of years of an evolutionary process all by itself. Ladies and gentlemen, it just it, you, you begin to see immediately the ridiculousness of not believing a God. You say, well, Brother Danny, science has shown and science has proved, and we get the reputation as preachers that we're against science. Uh, you hear it all the time, say, them stupid preachers down there in the South, uh, they don't believe in science. You are very much wrong. We do believe in science. We do believe in science. Let me, you want me to tell you what science is? The definition of science is this, knowledge based on observed facts and tested truths arranged in an orderly system. One more time. Science, the definition of science, is knowledge based on observed, observed facts and tested truths. That means that evolution is not science. It has never been observed. It cannot be tested. It is a leap of faith Believe in something happened that you didn't see and nobody else saw. Man said one time, he said now, he said that you can't prove there's a God. No, we can't. And you can't prove there's not one. Right. That means nothing. That is a wasted argument. That's a total waste of words. But let me ask you something. Uh, uh, let me ask you, if you, were a, if you were a judge in a courtroom and you had this lawyer over here saying, there is no God. And you had this guy over here saying, there is a God. All right, gentlemen, put forth your cases. You know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say, I found a handprint on my car. To me, I logically conclude there had been a person there. And my evidence is the print. You know, you can't prove there's a person there. No, you can't. You sure can't prove there wasn't one. There's way more proof that there was one than that there wasn't one. 
If you find a footprint in the mud and it's a perfect size of a shoe and even has the, uh, the grooves of the shoe in it, that footprint is evidence that somebody stepped there. Now, if you're a judge and a man says, well, I believe somebody stepped there. What's your proof? There's the print. I don't believe it. What's your proof? Ain't none. I just don't want to quit drinking. If it's honest, that's what they'd say. Come on now. Help me, y'all. Y'all gotta, gotta help me. I know it's been raining outside, but y'all can wake up here, can't you, just a minute? Look, people. Look, people. You are not crazy for believing God. You're crazy if you don't believe in one. There is no way in the world a footprint don't get there if somebody don't put it there. A handprint don't get there if somebody don't put it there. And God's handprint is all over this universe and all over this creation and all over me and you. The D, I mean, think about DNA. They didn't even know there was such a thing. Old Charles Darwin, you know what Charles Darwin's problem was? He wanted to be a preacher and he wasn't called to preach. He wasn't even saved. And he got mad at God because his daughter died and then he went and figured out lots of bunch of animals and stuff and figured out there was no God. And brother, that's where the whole theory and guess and, and hypothesis, that means a scientific guess, uh, came for the theory, not fact, of evolution. I say to you this morning, evolution, uh, uh, species, biological evolution is not a truth. It is not true. Things, things uh, mutate, things change, but nothing changes from one form of animal into another form of animal. It just does not happen. Somebody said this, once I was a uh, amoeba when I began to begin. Then I was a tadpole with my tail tucked in. Then I was a chimpanzee hanging from a tree. Now I'm a doctor with a PhD. Uh, that's what they believe and they'll charge you $100,000 to teach you that. And I just give it to you in plain English so any redneck in North Carolina can understand it. And that's what they don't like, brother. We got a book that tells us there's a God in heaven and thank the Lord this morning. If you can look at create, listen, there can't be a creation without a creator, people. There can't be a watch without a watchmaker. They can't, this building didn't just happen. Somebody had to make it. I'm telling you, you say, well, all the scientists believe. Yeah, there used to be a time when all the scientists believed a lot of crazy stuff. And it turned out not to be true. Amen. That's right. Nothing produces nothing. You got it? Nothing produces nothing. If there was no God, there would also not be nothing else. But the fact that there's something else proves, look, would you look at this and say nobody built this? This proves there's a builder. This proves there was a stonemason. This proves there was a carpenter. This proves there's electricity. The proof that somebody did it is looking at it. That's why Napoleon went out and looked at the stars one night and he said, for all, no other reason than that, I know that there is a God. You know, you know, you say, well, why do all educated people believe in evolution, Brother Danny? Well, they don't, they don't. All scientists don't believe in education. Let me quote you a famous scientist. The more I study science, the more I believe in God. You know who said that? Einstein. Why are kids not taught that in school? I mean, you want to teach kids, right? You want to teach them, right? Why is the quote not put on the board, the more I study science, the more I believe? Oh, we can't say God. We can't say God in the public school because the devil got the Lord and the Bible kicked out. And the kids are being deprived of the truth, only told one side of the story and the other side never mentioned. That's not a balanced education. Thomas Edison said before there was any DNA, no one can study chemistry and see how the elements combine and not come to the inevitable conclusion that there is an engineer running this universe. Amen, brother. Amen. You know what gets under my skin? They look at somebody like me and they'll, they'll say, well, have you studied evolution in college for four years, Mr. Castle? And I say, no, I have not. And they say, well, we're right and your Bible is wrong. You know what I say to them? Have you ever read the Bible through 40 or 50 times? Can you give a lecture on uniformitarianism? That's what they say to us. That's what they say to us. Jurassic period, the Cambrian period, the Cretaceous period. All that means is long time ago and long, long time ago and long, long, long time ago. 
but they pay it with Cretaceous, uh, all them big words, to get your money from the sucker. That's right. It's a con man game. Amen. It's a con game, people. That stuff ain't true. I mean, you got a picture. Here's a little bit monkey, and here's a little bit bigger monkey, and then here's a little bit bigger monkey, and then here's a little bit bigger monkey, and there's Piltdown Man, and Heidelberg Man, and Neanderthal Man, and finally there wasn't nothing. And if you're not careful, you'll let them bunch of nuts think, well, maybe, no, maybe not, maybe not. The Bible said God made them male and female in the beginning. He made a grown man, Adam, a grown woman, Eve. It's just like he said, and guess what? I, I can say, they say, well, you can't write a thesis on uniformitarianism. You know what I can say? You can't write a doctrinal thesis on the difference in premillennial, amillennial, and postmillennial views of the second coming of Christ. Say amen right there. And our book was here before theirs was. I, they can't understand the difference between Daniel and the book of Revelation as it relates to prophecy. I would say to them, can you give us 10 states of living that would be distinct in the millennial reign of Christ on the position of Israel? Uh, throw it right back in their face, buddy. Give them some of their own educated medicine. Can you understand the Calvinistic Arminian views of church dispensation? Can you, Mr. Scientist, give me a detailed study of the identification of the two witnesses of Revelation and the judgment of the nation as opposed to the great white throne judgment? They don't even know what I'm talking about. And they're gonna tell me that my book ain't right I've studied this 40 years. I've looked at it that way you can look at it. I've been taught science. I've listened to the evolutionists. There is no other way. This could all be here except there's a God up there that put it all here. Glory to God, hallelujah, say amen right there. Woo, thank God he's real. Do you know enough about the Bible, Mr. Scientist, to teach daily vacation Bible school to a class of five-year-olds? I doubt it. They know anything about the second coming of Elijah? Can you give us the Adamic covenants and who is the son of perdition identified by Scripture? Do you even know where the word science is in the Bible? No, they don't. They're going to tell us, throw your book away, and they don't even know. It's like somebody coming up saying, you can't tell me Noah got all them animals on that boat. Ask them how many animals they was. They don't know. Ask them how big the boat was. They don't know that either. They're bluffing you. They're hoping that you ain't done your homework and that you'll be intimidated. That's what they use, intimidation on people to give them, I'm telling you, brother, if I had ever scientist in the world sitting right here this morning, if I had ever signed, you said, you're just a little old uh, redneck preacher. I know that's what I am. I, ain't, I don't claim to be nothing. But I'm telling you, I got some big force with me. I got somebody bigger than me and you uh, working in me, y'all. Ain't somebody bigger than this planet working in me today. And I'm telling you, if I had them all sitting here this morning, I would challenge any scientist in here, you fall into four groups. Where did it all come from? Number one, it came supernaturally out of nowhere by itself. Number two, it came supernaturally out of nowhere by a divine act of creation. Number three, it always has been here. That's the eternity of matter. Some of them believe that. Or number four, it ain't even here. You just think it is. That's the hippie. You got to smoke a little crack to believe that one. But that every one of them falls into one of them four categories. Now, which one is it? It came out of nowhere by itself. Do you know there's only one out of them four that's scientific? And that's the second one. It came supernaturally out of nowhere by a divine act of creation. Amen. That's absolutely right. You know what atheism is? Atheism is a dishonest, immature, unsubstantiated, unscientific, Temper tantrum thrown at God because you don't like how he's doing things. That's what it is. Amen, preacher. You know, evolution's a lie. They change it every few years. They date the fossils by the rocks and the rocks by the fossils. That's circular reasoning. In other words, you say, how old are these fossils? Well, it's in the rock period of so-and-so. How old are these rocks? It's in the fossil period of so-and-so. You can't, that's called, that's called circular reasoning, indicated by the forefinger making circles around the temple. 
Uh, that means they're crippled too high for crutches, brother. That means a low IQ. You know what that means? You know what atheism means? It means we want to get drunk and shack up and we don't know God telling us what to do and you preachers stay out of our life. I hate to tell you this morning, buddy, but there is a God in heaven and God said if you don't believe that, you're a fool. Lord, even mercy, I got two more fools to talk about. No, he spent the whole time on that first one. Number two, take your Bible and turn to Proverbs 14 and verse 9. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse number 9. Here the Bible tells us the second biggest fool in the world. And uh, you, you're looking at, hurry up, y'all can't wait all day. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 9. You know where Proverbs is? It's almost in the middle of the Bible. Proverbs 14, 9, it says something like this. Fools make a mock at sin. Is that what your Bible says? Fools make a mock at at sin. You know who the second biggest fool in the world is? He's the person who gets high and gets drunk and parties and then laughs about it. <laughs> we lived it up Friday night, man. So-and-so's in the back seat and his old lady come out looking for him. He threw up on the car. That's a fool. People talk like that. Fools make a mock at sin. I know of a young man right now who got in a car up there in Marion on Halloween. They got drunk. They was all partying. 16 years old. Flipped that car upside down. That boy, his, his back, neck, and everything broke two or three places. They took him to the hospital. They told his family. They said if he lives, it'll be a miracle. Somehow people prayed and through a lot of prayer and God, God's mercy, God put, had his mercy on that boy's life. And he survived. He was a star athlete, football, muscles that big, dark hair, good looking. He could get any girlfriend he wanted. And his body got all busted up. And he's like, and they said, if he lives, if he lives, he'll never be able to walk. He'll never be able to get married, father a child. He'll never be able to feed himself. He'll be there like this the rest of his life. And to this day, that's been 30 years ago. That young man still sits in a wheelchair. He can't play football. He can't jump on a trampoline. He can't go out and play basketball and baseball. He can't even walk like I'm doing this right here. You know why? Because of sin when he was a teenager. Y'all teenagers listen to me this morning. Are y'all listening to me? It's not funny. Shooting up ain't funny. Getting drunk ain't funny. Taking a pill ain't funny. There's nothing funny about it. It'll mess you up. It'll put you in hell. It'll take everything you've got. Listen, people, our whole country is being destroyed by people on drugs and pills and alcohol. It's killing us this morning. And if you think that's cute, God said you was a fool. Amen. Ain't nothing funny about it. We talked to a lady yesterday. And I'm telling the lady, she couldn't even be still. Drugs would just, she's like this the whole time we was talking to her, you know. And it's everywhere you look, everywhere we go, everywhere we go, it's grandmother raising the kids. Where's mama? She's in jail. Where's daddy? He, who knows where? You know what that is? It's sin, sin. I'm telling you, all you kids here this morning, listen to me. Don't you ever put nothing in your body that you ain't supposed to be in there. Don't smoke no weed. Don't drink no alcohol. Stay away from it and stay away from crazy people that do that kind of stuff. Run from it, run from it. It'll cause you more trouble than you'll ever get out of. It'll, there's hell to pay. It's not a life in matter. I told you this over and over and over before. And I feel like there's so many, so many people here this morning, so many this morning that need it. I'll read it again. Listen. Hello. My name is Drugs. I destroy homes. I tear families apart. I take your children, and that's just a start. I'm more costly than diamonds and costly than gold. The sorrow I bring is a sight to behold. If you need me, I'm easily found. I live all around you, in your schools, in your town. I live with the rich, I live with the poor. I live down the street, or maybe next door. My power is awesome. Try me, you'll see. But if you do, you'll never be free. Try me once, I won't let you go. Try me twice, and I'll own your soul. When I possess you, you'll steal and you'll lie. You'll do what you have to just to get high. The crimes you'll commit for my narcotic charms won't be worth that pleasure you feel in your arms. You'll lie to your mother. 
you'll steal from your dad. When you see their tears, you should feel sad. I'll be your conscience. You'll forget your morals and how you were raised. I'll teach you my ways. I take kids from the parents and parents from the kids. I turn people from God and separate friends. I'll take everything from you, your looks and your pride. I'll be always with you, right by your side. You'll give up everything, your family, your home, your friends, your money, and then you'll be all alone. I'll take and I'll take till you have nothing to give. And when I'm finished, you'll be lucky to live. If you try me, be warned, this is no game. If you give me a chance, I'll drive you insane. i ravish your body, I'll control your your mind. I'll own you completely. Your soul will be mine. The nightmares I'll give you while lying in bed. The voices you'll hear from inside of your head. The sweats, the shakes, the visions you'll see. I want you to know these are all gifts from me. But then it's too late and you'll know in your heart that you're mine and we'll never more part. You'll regret that you tried me. They always do. But you came to me, not I to you. You knew this would happen. Many times you were told, but you challenged my power and chose to be bold. You could have said no and just walked away. If you could live that day over, what would you say? I'll be your master. You'll be my slave. I'll even go with you down to the grave. Now that you've met me, what will you do? Will you try me or not? It's all up to you. I can bring you more misery than words can tell. Come take my hand. I'll take you to hell. You ain't fooling nobody but yourself. When you say, I'm going to go party this weekend, preacher. Let me tell you something, kids. I, you better get a grip on this thing. You don't want to wind up like that. Thousands overdose on drug and opioids heroin, Vicodin, Oxycontin, and, and the, the drug to get you off drug, Suboxone, all the other drugs, they're just doing that. that that's legal, get by the doctors. Let me tell you, anything that alters your mind or gives you a false sense of security or doing that is, is the devil getting in your life to keep you away from God. The mocking fool. Lastly, let me say this, and I'm through. Take your Bible and turn to Luke chapter 12. I'll show you the third Biggest fool in the world. The third biggest fool in the world. Luke chapter 12. There's a story of a rich man. And the Bible said in verse 16, somewhere along in there, your Bible said the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. Right? right? And he said within himself, the next few verses, what shall I do? I will pull down my barns and build greater. And then look at verse 20. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee, and then whose shall these things be which thou hast provided? You know who that fool is? He's the worldly fool. He's the man that puts all his hope and trust in stuff, in his money, in his cars, in his house, and forgets God. There is nothing wrong with money, house, or clothes. If you got it, hallelujah, praise God, pay your tithes. But if you leave God out, you're a fool. Uh, we all heard just the other day of that man, Anthony Bourdain. He's the guy that traveled the world from CNN doing those documentaries. Did you hear about this just the other day? That man had the world by the tail. He could travel to exotic islands, eat any kind of shrimp, any kind of lobster, filet mignon, the best money could buy, clothes, jet, trips, girlfriends, had them standing in line. And that man left out God. And at 61 years old, took his own life and he's at that point where this man was when he said, I'm rich and increased with goods. What am I going to do? And God looked down and said, you fool. Tonight, your soul's going to leave your body and then who's going to have all this stuff? It happens every day. It happens every single day. People work all their life to retire and travel and go places. 
God looks down and says, you fool. You forgot the most important thing. The most important thing. I heard of a preacher years ago that went and preached in a prison. I'll tell this and I'm through. Years ago, preached in a prison. And he went in there that morning. Before the prisoners got there, he sat beside the chaplain. And there was a bunch of light-colored, grayish chairs. About 50 of them in there that morning. And he was sitting there waiting on the inmates to come in for the service. And he looked over here and there was two darker gray chairs. And he punched that guy and he said, uh, why are those two chairs different from all the rest of them? And the chaplain looked back at that preacher and said, preacher, the two men that's going to sit in them two chairs right there today are on death row. They're set to go to the electric chair tomorrow morning or the gas chamber. They've got 24 hours to be on this earth. You're the last preacher they're ever going to hear. This last service they're ever going to be in. They'll have their last meal this evening and die tomorrow morning. And that preacher had to stand in front of that crowd of men knowing there was two men right there that would never live another day. I've thought about that so many times. What if God, people, what if God opened my eyes this morning and I could see who's sitting in the dark gray chairs? Somebody in this room today may not be here tomorrow. It might be me. It might be you. So is he that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich toward God. Let me tell you something. I ain't perfect. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. i tell you one thing I made sure of many, many years ago. I made peace with the Lord. And I belong to Him. And I, I ain't got a lot of stuff in there. I mean, I got all I want. I was telling him, somebody yesterday, Larry and him, I said, you know what? I got everything I want. There ain't one thing in this world I want. The only thing I want is all my family to be right with God and everybody live for the Lord and serve the Lord and be together, and, and, and the church do good, and me do something. I don't want nothing. There ain't one material thing in this world I want. If you give me a new car, I'll take it. But I don't want one. Really, I don't. And I'm, if you got one, hallelujah, praise. I'm just saying the Lord will make you, is what makes you happy. You're not getting this and getting that and getting this and getting that. That ain't going to make you happy. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Don't be a fool. Now listen, you can, you can be a multi-millionaire, hallelujah, I hope you are. But don't, don't just forget God. There's your mistake. Let's stand with our heads bowed and eyes closed. Every head bowed. Every head bowed and eyes closed. No one's talking. No one's moving. Please. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. In just a moment, I'm going to ask her to play softly. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Nobody's moving. I wonder if there'd be someone here this morning. I'm not going to embarrass you. I wouldn't come to you or nothing like that. I'm not going to point you out. If there'd be someone here this morning and say, Preacher, God spoke to my heart this morning. And I need to move. I'm not where I need to be with the Lord. Please, would you pray for me? Would you let me pray for you this morning? I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to embarrass you, but I would like to pray for you. Just slip up your hand. Take it right back down. God bless you. God bless you. Hands all over this building. My, my, my. Hands all over this building. Christians pray. Christians pray for Holy Ghost conviction. Thank you. I don't know what your need is here this morning, but I know I've been praying all week, and I've been begging the Lord to do something in this service this morning. And there's somebody here today, if you don't move, it may be your last chance. I don't know, but you don't know it ain't. It may be your last chance. Will you let God help you this morning? Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. No one's moving. While she plays softly,
I want to ask you, would you take that next step and just step out of your seat, make your way down here to this altar, and let's get this fixed. Come on. Come on right now. Let's pray. That's right. That's right. Come on. I'm going to need some men. Come pray with these folks coming, some ladies. Come on, ladies, please. Ladies coming. Amen. Come on. Pray this young lady over here. Pray these men. This lady. I need some more ladies. Any, any ladies? Please. Hey, man, you'll come pray with these girls here. Thank you very much. Let's get down on our knees and help, ask the Lord to help us this morning. Come on, right now. Come on, come on, come on. If you raised your hands and I need help from the Lord, Brother Danny, why don't you come this morning? Why don't you come this morning? Make things right. Get, get your heart right this morning. Let's get down here and pray. And let's ask the Lord. To, he'll forgive you. He'll forgive you if you'll let him. He'll forgive you if you'll let him. He sure will. He'll forgive you if you'll let him. Will you let the Lord help you this morning? Amen. 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 What do you mean, pray this young man here? Let God speak to your heart this morning. Hallelujah. They're, that's what they're doing back here in the junior church. They're praying. They're praying for souls to be saved. Come on, teenagers, girls, y'all. Let's get down on your knees and say, Lord Jesus, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven when I die. I don't want to go to hell. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Come on right now. She's playing this morning. You let God speak to your heart. Let's do business with the Lord here this morning. Amen. 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 Y'all pray now. Christians pray. Just a few seconds. Just pray. Hey, if you're here this morning, you say, Brother Danny, I used to live right. And I've just got all messed up and got myself into a mess. I tell you how to get out of a mess right here. Make a new start here today. A brand new start. Wipe the slate clean. Forgive, forget, start all over here this morning. That's right. That's what you got to do. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on, Daddy. Come on, Mama. You obey God. Let's obey the Lord this morning. Amen. Thank God. Thank the Lord. Settle it. Settle it. When you walk out that door this morning, you say, I ain't no fool. I ain't going to be no fool. Amen. Like the old guy said, my mama didn't raise no fool. And that's right. Thank the Lord. Mine didn't either. I got enough sense to know there's a God. I got enough sense to know that I'm going to stand in front of him one of these days. Amen. Amen. Others are still praying this morning. How about it, y'all? How about it? You done what you're supposed to? You done what you're supposed to today? Amen. Have you done what you're supposed to? Have you done what you're supposed to today? You got it all fixed up? Got everything all fixed up? Huh? Here we are done fall again, y'all. It's fall already. Here we are in October. Year, another year gone by like that. Good time to get your heart right. It's a good time to get your heart right. God sees you, and you're going to stand in front of him one day. It's a judgment day. You're going to stand right in front of him, and you're going to give an account to God, and that's going to happen. I'd sell it if I was you. Come on, we'll wait just a minute while these are still praying. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Just keep praying. Just keep praying. Don't be, don't be in a hurry. These are getting things right with God. Maybe today, maybe today you ought to make up your mind. You know what? I'm going to start going to church. I'm going to start going to church. I'm going to get in this thing. Because, I mean, you ain't getting no younger, you know, or no healthier. Good time to make a fresh start here today. Amen. God will bless you for it. Amen. These are still praying this morning. Someone still to pray with somebody who got saved up here already. We had, we've had several uh, right up here uh, still being dealt with. Hallelujah. Isn't that a blessing? That's good, y'all. That's good. Amen. Amen. I can't wait to hear the results of uh, people... Uh, uh, this great lady got saved. Isn't that a blessing, y'all? Isn't that a blessing? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Got nothing over here in the oven. 
Others are uh, coming out. And those hope have a, isn't that a blessing, man? It, you don't see them tears flowing in church much any nowadays. It's all rock and roll and hoot and holler and crazy junk like that. Don't listen. Don't go to a rock and roll church. Go to a real church. If it ain't this one, find you a real one. Rock and roll ain't got no place in the church, y'all. Amen. Got to learn it sometime. Might as well learn it today. That's right. Uh, now, we're going to, while these are still praying, we're going to do this. We will have church here tonight. We got plenty of camp meeting flyers that need to go out of here this morning. So come and get these. Take them to your local mall, Dollar General, and put them, put them up there on the ice machine or somewhere where they'll let you. Be sure and get these. Take them out here. We've got three different sizes of them. Um, we ordered some of these little ones like a handout, these little ones like this. They were they're really, really neat. The bus workers put out a 1,000 of them yesterday. And so invite all your family, friends, make them promise to come with you to the camp meeting. Young man, get everything fixed, Brian. He got saved. He got saved. Got right with the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, don't miss one service of the camp meeting, okay? We're going to make final plans tonight. You really need to be here in the service tonight. And we're going to have hay rides. We've got hot dogs. We'll split them. Enough for everybody. we got got... Uh, Games, don't be in such a hurry. Oh, I believe we'll just slip on out. Don't be an old Scrooge all your life. Uh, go out there and enjoy. Yeah, that, you're going to get old if you don't quit acting like that. Uh, uh, you, the best way to stay young, get around a bunch of kids like that. They'll help you. And live right and take vitamin C. And then pray and hope for the best. You might fall over today. <laughs> all right, let's, let's, uh, let's bow our heads and be dismissed. Amen. Well, Chad, you dismiss us. Everybody, fellowship. Before you go this morning, we'll